So you're in the market for a compact SUV under $250,000, but everybody and their mother has a Honda Vessel. Well, this could be a best alternative, the Suzuki Vitara. And I'll be taking a look around the vehicle, inside the vehicle, taking it for a drive, and explaining to you all what I think the Vitara excels in over the Honda Vessel. Let's start with the exterior dimensions. Which one is bigger, which one is smaller? In terms of height, both of them are 5 feet 3 inches, width, both of them are 5 feet 10 inches, length, the vessel is slightly longer at 14 feet 3 inches versus 13 feet 8 inches for the Vitara. Ground clearance on the vessel is 8 inches versus 7 inches on the Vitara. Now the Vitara has 17 inch rims versus 18 on this vessel, so obviously it will be a slightly lower vehicle on the ground. Weight, the vessel is 3047 pounds versus 2601 pounds for the Vitara. So on paper, the exterior dimensions are pretty similar, but I can hear you all asking why am I comparing a hybrid electric vehicle, the vessel, to a gasoline vehicle, the Vitara? Well, that's the thing. This is also a hybrid. Now, we never got the hybrid Vitara over here, but then again, we don't get lots of things. But this is called the Escudo. It's the exact same vehicle, same Vitara, but it was meant for the Japan domestic market. So the name is different, but it's the exact same Vitara. Just replace the Escudo with the Vitara badge and you'll have the exact same vehicle. Usually I start at the front, but as you already at the rear here, let's start here. You have your wiper washer nozzle, you have your third brake light, rear wiper. And as you can see, no fancy dual exhaust or anything. You have a single exhaust on the bottom right and you don't have any 360 camera you just have one single camera poking out from below there that's it let's look inside this is where the vessel is going to get a one-up in terms of space the vessel has 448 liters versus the vitara's 289 liters so in terms of chunk space the vitara definitely has a smaller chunk space below here as you can see you have a tire repair kit your inflator your jack your hook no spare tire spare tires have long gone to the spare tire graveyard if that's a deal breaker to you, then don't buy a car in 2024 because you would never get a spare tire. Across here, you have a little hook. You can hook stuff here, obviously, because it's a hook. To the right of that, you have a light and you have a power outlet, what we normally call a cigarette lighter, but the official name is power outlet. Now, it's 120 watts. I don't think I've ever seen anything over 120 watts in a vehicle, so maybe 120 watts is the max for power outlets, but it's there in case you need it. Now, let's move to the front of the vehicle. You have LEDs for your low beam, high beam, daytime running lights, but you have normal bulbs for your turn signals. So just keep that in mind. LEDs throughout, except for your turn signal. This is what it looks like. I think the Vitara also had a nice front. Now, whether you choose the vessel's looks over the Vitara or the Vitara's looks over the vessel, looks are subjective. In my opinion, both of them are nice looking vehicles. Down low on the bumper, you have this rectangular box and you will see more and more vehicles are coming with this these days. In fact, it's mandated in many parts of the world. This is what the vehicle uses to look at the road ahead. So just think emergency braking, lane keep assist, collision mitigation, cruise control. Yeah, all of that is controlled by that box there. Now let's take a look at inside the Vitara. Now this is where the Vitara gets a point and loses a point. It loses that point because this whole door panel here is hard scratchy plastic. Now it loses a point because hard scratchy plastic, but it gains a point because it's durable. Your children are not going to mash up this. Ain't no way they're going to burst up this hard plastic. This hard plastic is here to stay. So on one end, if you are into the soft touch materials and the different accent colors, it's going to lose out. But if you want a durable door panel, you have toddlers in the back, milk spilling everywhere. These hard plastics are always going to stand up longer than the soft touch materials and the cloth. In terms of seat materials, you have a mixture of leather and cloth. And the cloth part does a kind of thing like sweet. When you pass your hand over it one direction, it changes color. It doesn't really change color, but you can see it doing it here. It's like it gets darker, and you pass your hand over it again, and it gets lighter. And then you have the leather part in the middle. Really nice seats, really, really nice seats. And then obviously you have the plastic on the seats because this is a new vehicle after all. I just kind of moved the plastic a bit to take this video. But generally speaking, yeah, plastic on the seats still. You have no rear pocket behind the driver's side seat, but you have a small rear pocket behind the passenger's seat. You have no rear AC vents or cigarette lighter or power lighter the rear here, just more hard plastic. Now with the front seat not pushed all the way forward or pulled all the way back, this is what seating looks like. I am 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and it's pretty comfortable. My knees aren't touching the front seat. Now, if you put it all the way back, it's going to touch, definitely. But right now, it's pretty comfortable. Now, let's switch to the front. You have regular lights on top here. Non-LEDs, but you can always switch them out for LEDs later on if you really want to. 
both driver and passenger side sun visors have vanity mirror with the lights again non leds but you can always change them out if you really want to you have a dealer installed android deck because the original came in japanese and few people don't here really speak japanese here you have your climate control below that you have a single cigarette lighter slash power outlet no usb connectivity here however the usb connectivity comes in a glove box via a line that runs from the android deck here you have your heater seize controls it's a toggle switch so all the way to the right is high all the way to the left is low and dead center is off here you have a reasonably sized glove box and in here is where you would find your two usb inputs to your android head unit so you can plug in a usb drive in here or a flash drive or your phone or whatever and you'll get your media from here to your android head unit on the door panel you have your usual controls power windows power folding mirrors your door lock and your door lock out for your windows however only the driver side door is one touch up down all the others you have to hold down the button or hold up the button and you all know i love my one touch up down that should be a standard feature on all vehicles but for some reason most manufacturers still don't do it this is the instrument cluster you have large analog gauges like most vehicles and in the center you have a digital display you also have steering wheel controls and even though it's a android head unit that was put in aftermarket everything still works your mode button still works volume your channel mute everything still works like factory on the right of the steering wheel this is where your cruise control buttons are so you have your cruise control set you have your cancel and you have how far you want the vehicle to follow so you follow distance and yes those are paddle shifters you are seeing at the rear there now this vehicle isn't sporty by any means it's not even trying to pretend to be sporty but you have paddle shifters there just in case you want to take a bit more manual control you don't like the transmission is shifting and i'll get into that later on you can take a bit of manual control here you have your lights for your fog lights you have your traction control on or off now if you hold this button down it takes off the entire system so you can see all your safeties off traction control lane keep assist everything is off but you can also take them off individually if you now like. when you hit your eco mode this is when you want to go into maximum fuel saving so you hit that and a small notification pops up there letting you know that you are now in eco mode now like i said you can take them off individually so i'm going to press this button here and it's going to take off the collision mitigation system so that alone is off everything else is on but that alone is off you can hit the lane keep assist button hold it down for about two or three seconds and now that alone is off so in case it's annoying you you find your steering wheel is pulling too much you can turn that alone off so you can either turn everything off or one by one depending on your driving preference now speaking about driving preference remember earlier on in the video we saw the escudo hybrid and all grip that all grip badge is one more thing and i think is the biggest thing that separates the vitara from the vessel all grip is suzuki's all-wheel drive system now by default it's an auto it's primarily rear wheel drive with some power going to the front if it detects any slippage it will send power to the wheels that has traction to the right you have sport you turn it to the left you have what they call snow i will say over here mud and rain well just really mud and then you can lock the diff and send power to all four wheels at the same time side note don't drive down the road on everyday asphalt with your diff lock you will damage your diff you will damage your transfer case don't do that if you don't know what you're doing leave the vehicle in auto and it will send power to whatever wheels has traction if you know what you are doing then go digging up between auto sport and snow and like i said that's one of the biggest things that separates the vessel from the vetera the vessel is nice very nice but when the road condition changes from this to this or this or even this you are going to be much better off driving the Vitara. Now there is a four-wheel version to the Honda Vezla as well but again let's be real when it comes to off-roading from long ago the old generation Vitara to the mid-generation Vitara to the new Vitara to the grand Vitara Suzuki has proven themselves to be off-road kings as a matter of fact many of their vehicles like the Jimny are considered poor man Range Rovers because they can go anywhere not like the average person is going to buy this vehicle and take it into the mud or off-roading anyway but you know what they say it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it but enough for the small talk let's take it out on the road and see how it drives taking the Vitara out on the road it drives like any other vehicle with a few caveats and the caveats being if you have driven any other hybrid vehicle before and you drove this you may wonder why is this feeling different it generally feels different while driving to a hybrid vehicle in fact you may question if it's even a hybrid at all 
but that comes down to the design of this i don't know why suzuki designed it like this they know best they are the manufacturers but it has 113 horsepower with 146 foot pounds of torque and it's a strong hybrid not the mild hybrid it's a 140 volt strong hybrid system but they mated this to a six speed manual automatic transmission now when you hear manual automatic you're probably wondering what is manual automatic well i'll get to that just now but take a listen to how it sounds just at idle so that's the engine song at idle but what is a manual automatic well what suzuki did they developed something called what what they called a ags automatic gear shift or amt automatic manual transmission and what that is it's a manual transmission which means no torque converter it has a literal clutch but instead of you having to physically depress the clutch pedal to shift gears it has an actuator of sorts that controls the depressing and the releasing of the clutch now that makes for some interesting driving because those of you who know the dual clutch transmission technically is like that but the difference is that the dual clutch transmissions has two clutches so when you are in first gear technically second gear is already activated or close to being activated so when the car shifts from first second is just there waiting and when you are in second third is there waiting now eliminate the second clutch and just leave one clutch what that does is create delay when first gear is shifting to second gear it feels like somebody who is now learning manual so they're taking long to depress the clutch engage the gear then release the clutch that is what it feels like now in everyday driving scenarios you don't experience this issue you won't even focus on that after having the vehicle for two three days this becomes apparent only on the heavy acceleration when you are asking me vehicle i want all the power you have give me everything and then some for example So as you all saw, each shift takes just about one and a half seconds. Now, nothing is particularly wrong with it until you compare it to maybe a Vessel or an Aqua, Toyota Yaris Cross, Corolla Cross, or even the older generation Vessel which has dual clutch transmissions. We are so used to now transmission shifting quickly or not shifting at all, that if you were to drive this, you would think it's a normal conventional automatic transmission when they used to call them the slush boxes because it just shifts so slowly. I don't know why Suzuki chose this transmission, but they did. But the surprising thing about it is when you are driving, just normal driving, it actually feels pretty smooth. For example, this is me just driving and using the paddle shifters. Sounds smooth too. Mm -hmm. I shift in the gears. You yeah. feeling that? Me feeling that. I, I, you shift in it or you? I shift in it with the paddle shift, that's it? But no, me ain't feeling it. I told them in it and drive in, but I shift in it. Oh, no, I didn't. I shift. didn't know you were paddling it. I hear any click button or anything. Yeah. The RPM changing, so I know it, and it's showing the, um, the gear shift in there. Yeah, so you know it's shifting. Yeah, but I ain't feeling it. Real smooth. Now this was within two, maybe three minutes of me driving the vehicle for the first time before we took it out onto the stretch to do the acceleration. And this leads me to believe that if the average person were to purchase this vehicle and drive it normally, like all here, through the city, up the highway, down the highway, through traffic, they would never notice that this transmission shifts like a slow manual driver. It's only when you slam on your accelerator pedal like from 0 to 100%, that's when you realize that the Vitara isn't a speed demon. In fact, Suzuki has never really tried to make Vitara speed demons. In a head-to-head -head drag race, the Vitara most definitely will lose to the Vessel, it will lose to the Iris Cross, it will lose to the Corilla Cross, in fact, it will even lose to the Aqua, it will lose to the Note, it will lose to the Kicks. But it's not trying to be that. It's trying to be a simple, reliable vehicle that you can take off-road if you have to and save a bit of fuel in the interim. Which is a perfect segue into the next segment of the video, fuel economy and range. 
on the website they said you can get an average of probably about a thousand two hundred kilometers but let's be real this is the real world i would average you may get about 800 kilometers per tank if you drive frugally if you are constantly on the accelerator pedal then obviously that will go down significantly but if you are driving like a normal person everyday person i would say 800 kilometers on a full tank when it comes to road safety you do have a lane keeper assist you have your it's not automatic braking but it will beep and let you know that the vehicles up ahead has stopped you need to brake so those things are there when it comes to lane keeper assist this is how it works So what I've noticed is that it will pull you back in lane, it will beep once you are approaching the white lines on either side of the road, it will beep and it will nudge you back into lane slightly and keep you as center as possible. But if you are not holding your steering wheel, it will not do that indefinitely. At some point, you will start a drift again. So it's like on the third time, it will pull you once, it will pull you twice, on the third time, you're playing the fool and you deserve what you get. It also has cruise control with the adjustable following distance so you can either follow closely or further back. Further back is best. I wasn't able to test if it has automatic braking but it does flash on the dashboard brake 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 when the vehicles up ahead have stopped. Now if you noticed I wiggled the steering wheel just now and that's because once the lane keeper assist has been activated you have to turn the steering wheel drastically to deactivate it. It needs to know that somebody is physically holding the steering wheel or it will just constantly beep. And it's the most loud and annoying, non-subtle, wake you up at 5 a.m. in the morning type alarm clock sound that you can ever imagine. Yeah, we'll Other car manufacturers at least try to make the lane keep song slightly pleasing to the air. Boom, 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 boom. A little elegance. Suzuki was like, nope, we are taking a blunt force trauma approach to this. You will wake up. If this activates because you fell asleep while driving and you don't wake up, then you are clearly unconscious. All in all, I'll definitely recommend the Suzuki Vitara to anyone who is looking for a compact SUV under the $230,000 price point that is not a Honda vessel that has a nameplate that has a long history behind it, that is a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive vehicle rather. And it's just a robust vehicle all in all. It might not have all the bells and whistles. It may not have all the elegant styling and stuff like its counterparts. But it gets the job done. It knows what it is and it does that job pretty well.